All right, welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, and it's mid-afternoon, basically. Uh, so it's not it's not this morning. But I want to bring up the bearish case for Bitcoin uh, as I just um, noticed something here on the weekly time frame for the CMEs. And what I'm looking at here is five drives of bearish divergence. Where price is making one, two, three, four, five higher highs than this high back here, while the RSI is making lower highs, five lower highs. So by definition, that is bearish divergence. Now, some might say this is looking back too far in time and it wouldn't be valid. However, uh, that does kind of reiterate my bias. Any kind of a weekly closure below 60,000 very likely gives us a quick drive into uh, the box of peace and prosperity or death and despair above the box good below the box bad and what does that uh, you know what does that line up for well um, we've got the Bitcoin having coming up in just a few days again the Bitcoin having countdown. Coming up here on good old April 19th, so 13 days from today. Um, so, you know, that is an eternity when it comes to the time or the life of a trader. Um, you know, 13 days is about two weeks, and that means a lot can happen. Um, this week is going to close for CMEs. This is, again, Bitcoin Futures. Um, in about one hour and 23 minutes. And, um, you know, some might already say that this has already, um, uh, you know, closed below the last prior wick and it's valid. And I, I, I'm interested to know anybody's opinion out there on this idea. So I just wanted to bring that up um, with the potential for a quick spike down uh, to maybe 44,000. Um, then I do think it would get picked up, honestly. I don't think that, because uh, five drives would actually take you to the bottom of the range, which would be all the way down here, you know, somewhere in this area. And I don't see that happening. Um, you know, all the gaps are filled except for this one uh, way back here on the CMEs, which is that uh, gap down at 9,600. So I don't think we're coming back for that one, um, but just something to be aware of. If there's blood in the streets, right, it's just another buying opportunity. And I would consider any kind of a move down as a major buying opportunity. So today, um, it doesn't look like we're going to close below the prior week low, although we already wicked below it. Uh, another kind of bearish signal there. Um, what else do I want to bring up from um, a macroeconomic outlook? Uh, we got non-farm payrolls today, which everything was bullish for the dollar except for manufacturing payrolls. Um, only thing bearish for the for the dollar. So as you can see, the dollar on the daily time frame did have a little pop up, um, and you know there is potential for the dollar to uh, you know make another swing to the upside here uh, based off of a breakout above the prior high there and you could get you know a swipe all the way up into this zone um just something to keep our eyes on remember when the dollar's bullish it's typically not good for risk assets additionally checking in on nasdaq our higher term time frame target of uh twenty thousand still intact i just don't want to see um Basically, next week, us come and close anywhere below the green 55 at 17,905. Otherwise, you know, uptrend and probably a new all time highs for the market that never goes down. Same thing for the SP holding the range and the Dow did put in a nice little double top there and did close below. Already coming in contact with that green 55 as the others have not. Uh, if you remember, the Dow led us to the upside and, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the market makers, whoever they are, are front running the market as everybody was looking for that 1618 to get hit. 
just some food for thought there. I uh, remember Bitcoin is highly correlated with the stock market still and uh, yeah, no decoupling yet. <clears throat> Although if you look at the infinite market cap of gold at 15 trillion, um, and silver at 1.5 trillion. Bitcoin is coming in at 1.3 trillion, almost going to eclipse the silver market cap. Pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, looking at high block capital, the liquidation levels again to the upside, 72, 73,000, and to the downside, uh, looking you know deeper down to around 59,000. Uh, that's probably the the broader range there. Um, so the question is, again, on the uh, <clears throat> little pennant here, are we going to break it to the upside and hold and continue for new highs? Or are we going to break it to the downside and, you know, come test out 50,000 bucks? That's the question. That is the name of the game. And you can see so far, one. So from this high right here, you got one, two, three confirmed highs. And yeah, that, you know, tells me that uh, there's a better chance of us testing the green 55 at a minimum and then kind of judge it from there. You're also going to have hidden bullish divergence on the other side. So it could give us a swing back to the top side of the range. Uh, pretty tough market to judge at this point. So we just want to keep our eyes on the stock market, on the dollar and on the Fed rate hike tool, which is going to be right here. Where is it? The Fed rate hike tool. I know I got it somewhere here. CME rate hike. So I was watching something this morning that, uh, you know, some macroeconomist that was uh, very... Uh, very optimistic about the fact that they are not going to cut rates at the next meeting, which is coming up on May 1st. Um, and I, I tend to agree with the stock market still nearly at all time highs. Um, inflation seems to be very sticky. So again, uh, kind of formation we're looking for is a break above the highs and then a lower high, and that would be bearish. Um, and then Bullish would be break below the lows, low, and then break back into the range, which is right there. So are we going to get the, the M or the W uh, is the question. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments below what your guys' thoughts are. Um, following up that, I think we took a look at Dixie one more time. I just want to check in on, yeah, there's several drives of bearish divergence. So could get a shot back to the bottom of the range here. Um, coming back from this high right here, you've got uh, one, two, three, you know, one, two, three lower highs in comparison to this high. So one, two, three lower highs. Um, and in the RSI, we've got one, two, three, call it four, uh, higher highs. So that is hidden bearish divergence. Um, what else do I want to bring up? Um, we looked at non-farm payrolls. We looked at the stock market. Let's check out Ethereum and see how Ethereum is holding up on the green 55. Uh, looks like Ethereum in its US dollar pairing is uh, definitely has a chance. I think I'm going to give my full chart uh, a look here. And we're coming in to declining volatility. That's Bitcoin. Uh, back on to Ethereum on the four hour time frame. So looks like it did just put in uh, an additional higher low right here. So we have a potential W formation, which could give you a run back up to minimum. $3,500. Uh, notice Ethereum has been hanging out around $3,300 for some time now and uh, trading between yeah, $3,600 and $3,300 for quite some time consolidating. We got low volatility and bang, as volatility increased, we saw a move down. Um, and so is this the first wave down? Um, yeah, that's the first wave down. So are we going to get a little bit more downside for Ethereum? Well, let's check out 
ETH Bitcoin, uh, the ETH Bitcoin pairing, which I don't see <coughs> right in front of my eyes right now. Gosh, I've just I've just realigned some of my charts here and <coughs> ETH Bitcoin uh, did just make its first major like lower low in a very long time. And we did, you know, we did kind of say that, hey, look, if we lose this box right here, then probably, you know, going to revisit the lows. Did we actually make a lower low is the question. Did we? <clears throat> Let me zoom in a little bit here. So this is Ethereum paired with Bitcoin. So to me, no, that is not a lower low. Uh, in fact, it looks like this might be uh, a higher low than this low. Not confirmed yet. We need to see a closure back above, not 0.5112. Um, but overall, this does suggest pressure is onto the downside as long as we're below that level and... That means altcoins versus their Bitcoin pairing probably going to uh, struggle unless you're one of the stronger altcoins. Um, that is, I think, all I wanted to bring up for today. Other than the trade I got pretty smashed on yesterday uh, for Solana. You know, you can't win them all, but that's why you put a stop loss in there. And uh, is it going to recover and I would say if we do close anywhere today below this wick low, which it's just below there right now, then very likely we do get a test down a bit further. But so far that looks like a um, bit of a hammer or a, what is it, upper shadow. Again, that is, if it closes like that, that's a bearish candle and you would expect maybe a fill at least to the middle of this wick or the bottom of this wick. And then, yeah, below this wick at 167, probably going to test that 160 level and perhaps even lower. Um, honestly, it looks like it's probably going to bounce from here. And the question is, are we going to put in another lower high as this is a lower high right here? Uh, higher high on a candle body closing basis and a lower high on a wick basis. So you be the judge on that one, <clears throat> but it looks like a range here, a nice little range. And if I had to give, you know, I'd, I'd give the benefit of the doubt to the bulls as, uh, you know, uh, Solana has been one of the best performing assets out there. It's just absolutely wrecked, um, you know, almost all the coins out there. And thanks to the meme craze, right? Um, Pepe being one of the memes, so it did lose this trend line. And, you know, could you call that a test of the green 55? Yeah, sure, you could. And these altcoins tend to start to fly over the weekend. I do believe any kind of a closure back above, above this trend line, probably going to get a, a send back to test this high at 89 cents. So just something to keep our eyes upon there. AGIX, I know a lot of people are talking about the, uh, the famous merger between AGIX, what's the name of the other coin, uh, Ocean Protocol and Singularity, is it? No, it's Fetch AI. AGIX, Fetch, and Ocean Protocol. I think AGIX is Singularity. Don't, don't quote me on that one. Let's see. Does it say down here? Key stats looks bearish according to this thermometer ag this is agi am i looking at the wrong coin i apparently was yes so let's take a look at that real coin and it looks the same no okay so higher term time frame consolidation as long as we hold this wick right here um, probably going to stay bullish. And if we do close below the green 55, call it the green 55, then you'd probably look for this M to get filled somewhere around 80 cents to 63 cents. That would be brutal, uh, brutal for 
for the altcoins in general. And if you start to see, you know, Ethereum, Bitcoin, that means Ethereum, Bitcoin. When Ethereum, Bitcoin goes down, that means altcoins are taking it on the chin in general. But it's still holding the line right here, giving it a chance to bounce. You know, day's going to close here in four hours. Momentum is to the upside, crossed up. And I'd be more keen on a bounce from here, somewhere up to uh, back to this retest of this level. Um, and then, you know, probably probably looks good from there. But uh, render another strong one, made it all the way down to the green 55. Um, if I, you know, I don't like that signature when volatility is increasing along the green 55, it tends to bleed out. Um, any kind of a closure back below that level is going to probably hurt the bulls. Um, and why not look at Ocean as well, because they are part of the part of the game here. And you will see one, two, three, and that's perfect three three drive philosophy here. So we're making one, two, three higher highs, and one, two, three lower highs, which gives you a shot to the green fifty five. Now, some would already call this a test of the green 55 and say, hey, maybe it's over. All we got to do is close below yesterday's high. And yes, I would say test in and uh, chance for bounce is probable. Um, <clears throat> near up 10% today. What's the news on near? I don't know, but that looks, that's the bull case right here. See, it almost tested that green 55. And now volatility was declining. That's what the signature you want to see. And alongside uh, several drives of hidden bullish divergence, I would say, call that one, two, uh, gives you a shot to the pretty much the mid range, um, maybe, maybe a little bit higher up to 823. So the question is, are we going to get a trend reversal and take out this wick? and call this a W formation, that would, that would be nice. Um, so just closing above the middle wick, I would look at a test uh, back up to 899. And it does look like the potential for a little run on Mr. Near is close. I wanna check in on Ton. Ton has been a bit of a beast and just making higher highs and higher lows and trudging the road to happy destiny, did not even get close to the green 55. So at some point, all assets do come back to the green 55. Um, Sui making a test down to this trend line, a pretty easy way to uh, manage the risk. If we come down just a little bit lower, where would we like to see it come down? Well, let's get rid of that fib. We just wanna see it hold this trend line and wick into like the 0.5 or the 618. There is your 618 test. So pretty easy uh, long right there with the stop right below the prior wick. Um, that would look good uh, with the you know pretty low risk to reward opportunity, declining volatility along the green 55. I do like Sui for a bounce and that would give you a few drives of hidden bullish divergence as well. If we confirm this as a local low coming back from this low right here, you've got one, two, I'd say one, two, three, this would be your fourth drive, and that would give you a target up to the 1618 FIB. And if you do want to learn about hidden bullish and bearish divergence, uh, we do offer a, uh, well, you, you can check out our website, Bitcoin Advisors, um, BitcoinAdvisors.com. Oh, got to get the extra C out of there. Bitcoin. Bitcoinadvisors.com. And if you go to our resource center, uh, we actually have a cookie cutter layout on bullish and bearish divergence, how to use... Uh, the moving averages as a guide for your target and the four drive philosophy gets you to the 1618 FIB. Doesn't always work out, but uh, it does tend to in trending bullish markets. So 
Um, definitely, you know, with the bullish bias that Bitcoin is going to test the highs one more time. Um, maybe it's this weekend. Maybe this weekend we get that test of the highs and then we got to see how the weekly closes. And again, CME is going to close here in about an hour. So it's going to set in the bullish or bearish bias uh, for the weekly close. And you do have uh, kind of the second cross down. You do have stochastic bearish divergence there. So what is that when um, the stochastics are making lower highs and the price is making higher highs? You don't have it on the RSI. So just keep that in mind. And um, it's not quite confirmed yet. And let's see, are we still in the critical zone? Yes, we are. So the market is still trending. Doesn't mean it's over for Bitcoin yet. But if we do come back down in the critical zone one more time, and especially take out this low, that would be your signal that uh, a greater correction is upon us. So I'm um, glad to remind myself of all these things. One other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, they're giving away an airdrop over at banterbubbles.com. I thought this was pretty cool. They have an airdrop for this gummy coin coming out. All you got to do is go to the, the URL here, sign up, create an account, and then click on the little yellow thing and start earning your points. Uh, so hopefully that'll be fun. If you haven't gotten an airdrop yet, um, you know, might as well get one for the first time. Probably going to be pretty easy to get this one. All right. That's it for today, guys. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored rest of your week, and I will see you next week on Monday. Take care.